We live in a twilight world. And this video is going to be very similar to the last video regarding illusion warfare at this current moment in time. And a lot of people have been hitting me up telling me they've been seeing over in Germany, the Bundeswehr, the German military, have been driving leopard tanks, ragging them around on the Autobahn. The Autobahn, I'm pretty sure most people in Europe know what the Autobahn is. It's their, it's their kind of uh, motorway system, um, you know, famous for not... I, I think, I believe the Autobahn, most of it doesn't have a speed limit. So you can drive as fast as you want. But yeah, man, they got these leopard tanks. Um, although their turrets are facing that way, they're actually driving towards us. I might include the video at the end of this one. But um, yeah, man, they've been ragging up and down, uh, you know, in, in, in public plain sight, of course, because they want the public to see it. Illusion Warfare, they want the public to see it, record it on their phones, and then put it all over social media, right? Now, obviously, you know, anyone in the military knows, and even if you're not in the military, you know that this is not the most efficient way to move tanks around. You know, the Bundeswehr or a modern military, they will have a whole logistic corps who are in the business of transporting these um, huge bits of kit around more efficiently and more more safely and more, you know, in a, in a, you know, cost-effective as well, right? This is obviously not going to be very good for the tanks to be ragging them around their engines at that high rev. It's not going to be good for the um, motorways themselves, this heavy gear driving around on them and so on, which kind of like further pushes my argument or makes my argument more legitimate, and this is purely theatrics, purely for the members of the public to witness and experience because that's what they want. Um, yeah, man. Like I just said, talk to anyone in the, in the military, especially regarding logistics or tanks, and you'll know that you'll drive them around on regular lorries. You'll mount them on the back of a lorry, drive them where they've got to go, and that's that. Efficiency, right? Funnily enough, I'll tell a quick story. I, you know, I work in security, right? And a lot of people in security are ex-military. It seems to be like a go-to kind of industry once they leave the military, right? So I come across a lot of military guys. I know a lot of military guys and so on and so on. And I never forget years ago, I was speaking to a tanky, you know, a guy that used to be in a tank regiment. And I'm not one of these arseholes that will ask leading questions or deliberately try and, like, push forward that war is bullshit and military is bullshit. I'll just ask genuine questions and I'll kind of gauge from their answers, like, you know, what's going down with military life and stuff. But anyway, I never forget this tanky. He said to me, anyway, the main kind of question, the main kind of thing I used to ask people in the military is, was it fun? Was it exciting? To which most of them, any honest soldier, most of them will be honest and say that being in the military is very boring. That's why they left. From my experience talking to ex-military people, the main reason they left is the boredom. Very, very boring lifestyle. So when I came across a tanky, I was like, well, that must be quite fun, right? Ragging tanks around. And he said to me, and this was his words, he said, if I was to add up the amount of hours I'd spend in a tank in one year, it'd probably be about two weeks of actual time in a tank. Now, imagine that. You've joined up in the military to be, a, you know, a tanky in a tank regiment. And for a whole year, it's barely two weeks in an actual tank. That might sound ridiculous to some of you listening. For me, it doesn't sound ridiculous because I'm very clued up on these kind of things, right? This is the whole kind of area I focus on, right? The reality of things other than what people think they're going to feel and experience. Now, I'm sure if you were looking at the brochure on recruitment to join the military and looked up the tank regiment, I'm sure every bit of image on, the, uh, on their page would be a tank, you know, a tank going through some water, a tank driving up a mountain, a tank blasting a, a shell off into the distance. Tank, tank, tank. And the reality is you only get to spend about two weeks in an actual tank. He said to me, what they would tend to do is spend like four weeks in a simulator. They've got very advanced simulators now that can be adapted to whatever tank you're driving. He said, then you would also go and practice maneuvers in a Land Rover. 
So you do whole tank maneuvers, how tanks would operate on a battlefield, a European battlefield, a Middle Eastern battlefield, but you do it in a tank with a little flag, the flag obviously designating what kind of tank you're driving. And then once you've done your simulator and your kind of tank simulation in Land Rover, then you would go and do one day in a tank, doing it for real, and then they would sign you off, right? You can do, you prove you can do it in a tank, we've signed you off, we've signed your logbook and so on. And he was telling me the main, what they were, the main reason was like cost, right? It was just too expensive and just too much of a hassle to be using these tanks all the time, every time. The more you use a tank, the more it's prone to breaking down, malfunction. And yeah, man, you know, I don't know what, how many gallons you get to, to, a lit, to a liter in a tank, but they're not very fuel efficient, right? So, you know, simulators and Land Rovers, right? Anyway, back to his picture here. Yeah, man, you're going to be seeing a lot of this coming up now in Europe, especially with, you know, Exercise Steadfast Defender starting very, very soon. The largest NATO exercise uh, in a long, long time, 90,000 troops. You're going to be seeing loads of this kind of stuff uh, coming to a European you know, region near you. I think it initially starts off in Poland. So anyone listening here in Poland, you're going to be seeing a lot of this. Not that you haven't already this year, right? Because Poland is obviously right next door to Ukraine. You know, people in Russia and Ukraine have been seeing um, this now since, since February 2022, right? In Ukraine and Russia, you're more likely to see the tanks just going up and down on the back of a train. They like to move their stuff around on railway railway lines right so it's the same bunch of tanks but they'll make sure it will go up and down the country back and forth back and forth going for every little town and village going up and down every railway system it can so the locals see tanks on the back of a you know on what they call a f in america they call it a fat cat right these kind of transport uh trains that carry around big things like this So yeah, man, you're going to be seeing a lot of this coming up. Yeah, very theatrical. And, you know, like I've always said, in my opinion, they are building the backstory of World War Three. In 50 years time, when we've all got dementia and we're in a retirement home, they will try and make up that this was real. That it, this wasn't a drill. These leopard tanks were rushing off to the front line Front lines to go and fight the Nazis or the Soviets or whatever the fuck they're going to try and say, right? See, if I was to get all the clips I have of tanks driving around in the streets and exercises taking place on European soil and I was to put them together in a montage, it would be exactly the same as the montages you see regarding World War II when, uh, you know, when, when the Allied forces were rushing off to wherever, the Ardennes or whatever, you know? So, yeah, man. So yeah, please, everyone, always let me know when you when you hear about these things. And um, yeah, man, I'm always willing to talk about it. But, you know, it's the same thing. In my opinion, if you're asking me, this is theatre. This is pure theatrics in plain sight to create the illusion of war. We live in a twilight world. There are no friends at dusk.